Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week's Monday movie is going to be a little bit shorter. I've actually been out of town most of the week, so I haven't been able to to put quite as much time into this um, as I had hoped. But that doesn't mean that we don't have a really awesome show today. It's just going to be a few minutes long. I want to show you uh, a little-known technique for altering the quality of your displacement maps in Mental Ray, which can, when set to very low quality settings. Speed up your render times when you're doing test renders um, so you can get a good idea of what your scene looks like. But when you turn the quality all the way up, you can actually get more detail out of those displacement maps than you would using the default settings. So you're gonna really like this. I've created here a sphere. I've applied a displacement map to it. It's HDRI lit. Um, it's a cellular map. You can see right here. Just on a typical standard material. And this cellular map, I've changed it from circular to chips style cells. Um, and I changed the fractal settings. So I made it a um, with five iterations, which means that there's more detail in this, uh, in this function, in this uh, map, than there would be in the final image. And that's what's so important is because we're saying, well, for some reason, Mental Ray isn't rendering out all the detail I'm, I'm passing it in and I want more. I want more of it to reach the final render. So let's take a let's take a quick render here and see what we're working with. So you can see right here that the sphere is being displaced by the map. And the issue that we're going to try to resolve is well, you know, look at this. It's kind of um it's a little too smooth, right? This function is supposed to be chunkier. Uh it's supposed to be it has, it has greater detail, high frequency detail that's being left behind by the default displacement settings. So let me show you how to fix that. We just have to go into our uh, render setup panel, hotkey F10, and at the very bottom of the renderer tab, at the very bottom of the renderer tab, is the shadows and displacement rollout, and at the bottom of that is the displacement group, which is what you're looking for. Now the quick rundown of these uh, settings is uh, the view, uh, this checkbox allows you to determine whether the edge length, this value is going to be in pixels or in max units, uh, whether they're feet or meters or, or generic units. Smoothing determines whether the displacement, the, the resultant subdivision that's explicitly for the displacement should be smoothed. Usually just leave that on. And the edge length and max displacement, now these are really important. Maximum displacement says how far, when a, when a pixel is being rendered, how far should the renderer look around that pixel in order to find out if there's displacement nearby? Because, you know, it's hard to tell, right? Um, if you're rendering one pixel, another object could have huge displacement and be totally in that space. And so the, the renderer has to look around for that. The default values for this are usually all right, unless you're looking for some very extreme displacement, in which case you'll need to up this value or you'll get some weird results. On the other hand, if you're using very light displacement like I am here, I can actually increase, I can increase the render efficiency by turning this down. I can say you don't have to look around very far when you're rendering because this object doesn't have very far displacement at all. So I turned it down to a foot. Finally, the edge length, this is important. This says, okay, how detailed should the mesh become, the, the sphere mesh, when it's being subdivided for displacement? How detailed should it become in order to, to portray the detail that's in the displacement map? Right now it's set at two pixels, which says, okay, for every for the two pixels, any two of these pixels, that should be uh, you know considered a subdivision and no further. But if I want more detail, why don't I just turn this down to one pixel, where I say each pixel should be a polygon, right? And then that gives me a solid, uh, a solid color for that pixel at that displaced location. Better yet, what if I said I want 0.5 pixels, which means each pixel in this image should be made up of more than one polygon. So we know that we are taking in all of the detail that's in that, in that map in that cellular map that I passed in for the displacement. Take a look. I'm going to go ahead and copy this image that I took, and we're going to compare it against the finer tuned displacement settings. Now, 
Now, this render took more than twice as long, and that's something to keep in mind, that when you, when you want more quality, it's going to impact your render times. But look at the increased quality in this displacement. It's so clear, especially in this area. The fidelity of the detail is incredible. Look at this. I'm going to zoom in for you. One, two. So it's two clicks of zooming in for both. This is the same area. But keep in mind that this one rendered much faster. Four seconds versus 13 seconds. So when you're using this technique in practice, remember that you can leave it as low as, as uh, two pixels on like the default value for most of your renders. But when it comes time to push that production render, go ahead. Turn it down to 0.5 pixels or 0.1 pixel or whatever. And that will give you the extra rich, juicy detail from your displacements that you really never thought possible. So that's the Monday movie for this week. Uh, next week, I'll hammer out another one for you. Be sure to tune in. Until then, happy rendering.